2016 was a great year for anime, but throughout the entire year, the show that stood out to me the most was ReZero. I remember how, when it finished, before I had a chance to watch it, I had a friend who posted on Twitter saying it was within their top 10 anime ever, and I just thought that was crazy, that they were overhyping it. Then I watched it. They weren't wrong. It deserved the title of Anime of the Year, and honestly, the only reason why it did not rank at the top spot on my list was because it was incomplete, and there are so many things left unexplored. But the novels exist, and while it does not take away my problems with the anime itself, I want to see more of this great story. Plus, my friend Garfield suggested I make a video on the two interlude chapters that occur at the end of Arc 3, since I was looking for a short topic to cover this weekend, and well, after reading them, I have to say... ReZero is good. So if you don't know, ReZero's story is split into arcs. The anime adapted the first three, and the web novel has continued this through arcs four and five, and six is in progress. There are a couple chapters at the end of arc three that weren't adapted, which seem to be setting the stage for arc four. To be honest, I wasn't expecting all that much from these. Yes, they're ReZero, and I like ReZero, but they were just transition chapters, so there would not be any big events or anything that exciting, right? Yeah, very wrong. The first interlude chapter focus on Rem and Krush, Krush, I forget how to pronounce her name. We'll say Krush who were riding on their carriages after they had defeated the White Whale. And then they encountered a stranger in the road who starts destroying carriages, slicing people and dragons in half, and causing all kinds of damage. We learn that this is Regulus, the Sin Archbishop of Greed, and he is joined by Lei, who is the Sin Archbishop of Gluttony. Rem and Krush are completely overwhelmed here. Krush loses an arm, and Rem ends up going all out in her demon form to try to stop him, but she is killed without us even seeing the battle. And yeah, this chapter was amazing for a lot of reasons. First, I'm glad that we got to give some focus back to Rem after she was basically just taken out of the final few episodes of the season, and this was a shame because of how much she had been built up throughout the series. Granted, this ended with her death, but even this allows the connection between her and Subaru to be deepened because she's not completely dead, but I'll get to that later. I also absolutely love Regulus and Lei here, and it was just such an amazing introduction to them as villains. We saw the Archbishop of Sloth in the second half of the first season, so we kind of got an idea about how powerful these characters could be. Regulus's rants in the first part of the chapter were just so great, complaining about being interrupted and basically just saying and doing whatever he wants. And then Lei, how he goes on about wanting to eat and their dynamic, it's just wonderful, plus their power. Rem and Cruz have been established as very powerful characters, but they were just crushed here. And it makes me wonder what Subaru could possibly do to take them down, or what kind of strategy he could figure out to overcome them. And then there's a single line in this chapter which is just so brilliant in how simple it is. Lei is just going off one of his rants, and then the novel says, Silently, Rem turned her eyes to Regulus, and Regulus waved hello. And keep in mind, Regulus just sliced off Crucia's arm and has been built up as kind of the main villain of this scene. And there, he's just standing here like he doesn't want to be there. His waving to Rem is shortly like a green and saying, yes, I know Leia's nuts. I don't want to deal with him either. It just, it's amazing. It's just the way it frames the scene, these characters. And it's just a simple line that out of context means nothing, but in context, it just means so much. The writing throughout the chapter, I found to be really amazing. One of the things that surprised me with the web novel, and I'm guessing others like it, is how focused on dialogue the writing is with very little in actual narration. We do get some with more of the characters' thoughts, but for actions or overall descriptions, they are very minimal. But it is still able to work, and I think the lack of narration ends up helping, keeping the writing from being bogged down, and I can still feel all the fear and sense of being overwhelmed that Rem was facing here. And I remembered why I liked her character so much in the show with her dedication to Subaru, and now trying to stand strong against such powerful villains. Just a great chapter overall. And I have a message from Garfield, which is quite fitting. Hi, Garfield. And then the second of the interlude chapters brought us back to Subaru, and he, as he and the other characters were trying to figure out what their next course of action should be after the previous attack. We learned that Krush had not only lost her arm, but also her memory. At least I think she still lost her arm. I don't know if uh, Ferris healed it. And we also learned that Rem was alive, but completely comatose, 
Plus, everyone but Subaru had forgotten who she was, which obviously devastates Subaru. Remember what happened in the previous episodes. During the meeting to discuss their alliances, we see all the different motivations and all the desires of the characters. During the meeting, Subaru obviously wants to save Rem, wants to help Amelia, but Ferris has his own motivations, mainly to protect Krush. And I really like how they show Ferris here, with him being sort of antagonistic to Subaru, but only because they have conflicting motivations here, not because Ferris is any type of bad guy. Even Wilhelm here, who takes Subaru's side and convinces them to keep the alliance now, is just doing it for his own selfish reasons. The characters are not acting to be good. They're doing it for those they care about and are loyal to, even if it means opposing those who they might kind of be friends with. And that's something I like about ReZero, is how, like, Subaru is building a sort of alliance of people, but they are all doing what they're doing for their own reasons, not just to help Subaru. Even Puck here, there's a lot about him we don't know, which makes me really curious. And Subaru wanting to punch him, and yeah, I could feel his rage. I especially like his line telling Puck not to touch Rem, either through his hands or his words. That was just a cool line. I also like the fact that the story is revisiting the whole losing memories thing that the White Whale did. At the time, it seemed kind of like a random thing to have happened. Now it is tying into Gluttony's power, and that just fits the whole story better. And of course, I like how determined Subaru is to kill Gluttony now, even if it is not that simple to restore Rem, it is the only hope he has, and he is the type of character to cling to whatever hope he can find, no matter how slim the chances are that his plan will succeed. Another thing I liked is how they handled the return by death mechanic here. Over time, Subaru has learned to use this power to his advantage, so when he sees Rem in this condition at the start, without hesitating, he kills himself, only to find that the save point had moved forward, so he could not go back to save Rem. And then he considers that even if he could go back, he wouldn't have been able to save Amelia, so he's stuck here. The return by death mechanic is a really interesting one, allowing the story to do a lot of things it couldn't otherwise, but as we see here, it is not just an all-powerful tool for Subaru to use. So yeah, these really were two great chapters, and now I have to decide if I want to read Arc 4, or wait for the second season that I really hope will come eventually. Either way, ReZero is awesome, and thank you Garfield for suggesting I cover these chapters. If you are interested in reading them yourself, I will include a link down below to the translation that I used and Garfield uses, and I've heard it's the good one. While it may be the only one I've read, I have to say that ReZero really is the best Japanese web novel I have ever come across. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.